If you are someone that likes the idea of mag wheels and a dual suspension on an e-bike that can be folded in half, this may catch your attention. The Cyrusher XF700, a bike that I've been able to get my hands on to try out, and a note as always, this is not sponsored nor have I been paid. Just my take on what I see as a different approach to a folding e-bike, at least to me. Different because all the folding e-bikes I've ridden have all had a tall beanstalk style stem. This bike, a more traditional configuration with a standard 90mm stem and 31.8mm diameter flat bars. For control, there's a twist throttle at the right grip, and the shifters, Shimano shifters, the budget Mickey Mouse style, actually went full Mickey on this one with a shifter on each side. At the left grip, a function control for the computer, a computer model I'm not familiar with, labeled Model S900. It's somewhat no frills, but easy to read, and it also has a backlight and doesn't flicker like this in person. It's large as far as bike computers go, so we'll see. The Zoom branded brake levers have motor shutoff switches integrated into them, and that's something in my opinion every e-bike should have. Dual suspension means half of it up front, and in this case it's a partner branded fork with manual lockout, preload adjustment, and an unspecified amount of fork travel. And as common on many e-bikes, there's a headlight mounted to the fork's arch, the lower tubes, no graphics in their place, side reflectors. And now to one of the distinguishing features of this bike, the quick-release mag wheels. Alloy wheels, 26 inches, and they come wrapped in 26 by 1.95 Chow Yang branded mountain bike tires. Well, they say mountain bike, but they're really more hybrid style knobbies. The frame is 6061 alloy in the front half, contains the battery and the folding mechanism. At the rear half, we see the bike's rear suspension shock, hot branded model HLT100. And like the front, no provided travel specs, but the rear pivot system, it looks familiar a lot like that on the Hyper Hydroform, including nylon spacers. Alloy pedals and 170mm crank arms lead off the drivetrain, which is a 3x up front. It has a derailleur that looks a lot like a Shimano Torni Sans the Torni sticker, and that would make sense because the rear derailleur it is a Torni. I see this a lot on e-bikes, including this 14 to 28 tooth freewheel, a Shimano freewheel in this case. The 3 up front with the 7 in the back makes 21 speeds to use with the rear hub motor, which is 36 volts and 400 watts, and it rests inside the alloy hub on these mag wheels. Above that rear wheel is a rear rack that looks, well, very budget, but functional, including mount points for straps or cargo nets. This bike's stated rider heights a large range, so there's an adjustable seat post with a quick-release seat post clamp and a somewhat out-of-place looking comfort saddle. Other noteworthy components are the brakes, because these rotors are 160 millimeters, which is interesting because Cyrusher's website says this comes with 180, but the bike I have 160 front and rear, with Zoom 320 mechanical calipers. Rotors aside, these look like decent budget brakes, so we'll see. Some e-bikes have exposed cadence sensors. This one is sealed, though I don't know if it's an 8 or 12 magnet model. And along with the mag wheels and the folding frame, this bike came looking like it was straight out of the dry cleaners with a production tag hanging off the front cabling. I would be curious to see what this actually says in Chinese, so comment below if you can read it. I've ridden a lot of folding e-bikes, but this is such a unique combo that I wasn't sure what to expect. But after a week and a half of riding, there are some things that definitely stand out. First, how quiet the electric motor is. I had to mount a camera right beside it to get any noticeable sound for this video. It's so quiet that while riding with wind blowing in my ears, I can't discern it from any other noises. And while I have this shot, the rear derailleur, it shifts well out of the box, no adjustment required, and that's at the rear. Up front, it's usable out of the box, but could use some tweaking. I say shifts well, but that's the right shifter because it's indexed. On these Mickey Mouse shifters, the left is non-indexed, so it's less intuitive. And these shifters do get used because with only 36 volts and 400 watts, it's not an overpowering assist, meaning I regularly have to shift off the line. Which is different than how I usually ride e-bikes that are throttle equipped. I use the throttle off the line to start off, even when I'm in a pedal assist mode. On this bike though, the throttle only works with the pedal assist turned off, which I don't particularly like, but even in throttle mode, this bike can reach speeds up to 20 miles per hour. I would say 15 to 18 is easy to maintain, even on small hills. 
Though there isn't enough power for throttle only up steeper hills because on those the bike will run out and stutter at a standstill. And that's where the pedal assist modes come in. This bike has five pedal assist modes, stair stepped output by mode. I'll put the average speed for each power assist level on the screen, but the one everyone always asks about is top speed at max assist. And for this bike, it's 22 miles per hour at pedal assist mode 5. And it's at that max assist that I'm kind of impressed with the ride because for 36 volts and 400 watts, everything works well together, so well in fact that I can barely feel where the power fades out and when it kicks back in at speeds above and below 22. It's a nice smooth transition and it virtually eliminates any run out of pedal effect. And even though it's low power, I wouldn't know that this bike weighs around 50 pounds. Throttle mode withstanding, this is a balanced ride, and balanced is a good word because this leans well into turns just like a standard bike, because there are no chest high grips or scooter sensation to get acquainted with. All that in conjunction with the dual suspension make for a stable ride, even on bumpy city streets. Now the coil front and rear suspension isn't going to win any awards, but it's not a pogo stick. Now I'm talking urban obstacles here because this isn't something I would take onto a trail. That's not to say it feels fragile, I just don't like the idea of mag wheels on a trail. Speaking of which, mag wheels are always a concern to me because they can't be true, but these arrived acceptably true, and I gotta admit, they do look good rolling. Mag wheels, and folding e-bike for that matter, are something you're either going to like or you aren't. For me, this is the second Cyrusher e-bike I've ridden, and this is a marked improvement. Let me give you my breakdown, the pros and cons for this bike, based on my experience with it. And I'll start with a couple of things that are both a pro and a con, like the throttle, which I like having, but I don't like that I can't use it if I'm in a pedal assist mode. And the computer, this S900, very generic looking, but visible even during daylight, and easy to control, so that's a pro. Let me show you the controls. The mode button selects between odometer and trip meter. The up and down arrows switch between the pedal assist modes. Also enable or disable the headlight and the pace or walk mode. And I have a history of e-bike computers randomly resetting the odometer to zero. And with this one, I can actually reset it myself in the computer settings, which works to my advantage when I'm trying to get ranges per charge. But there is a con to this computer, it keeps losing miles on the odometer and it happens so often that I can actually catch it on camera. And check this out, 11 miles on the odometer but when I turn the computer off and back on it drops to 10 and this happens regularly, I have no idea why, it's not a major problem but it is annoying. See what I mean when I say the computer is both a pro and a con. The suspension fork though, that is a positive on its own. I measure 80 millimeters of travel, more than enough for around town. For the rear shock, I measure 30 millimeters of travel. Not a lot, but the pivot system works well with that 30, so all good there. I've said dual suspension, but this is almost triple suspension because that big comfort saddle has dual springs for a cushy assist. A pro for the 3 by crank set, normally I would say no to 3 by but it's needed here because this is a help you pedal bike rather than a do it all for you ride. And that goes along with the motor, which is not exceptionally powerful, but does balance well with this setup, so I'll say that's even. Neither a pro or a con. Along with the mag wheel styling, there are a few other touches that help justify the $9.99 price. Pricing that puts it in competition with some other folding e-bikes, and as far as folding, it works like other folders with easy separation where the battery can be accessed if it needs to be removed, it can be charged in the bike. The battery itself, it feels, at least the housing, well built, but I don't know what cells are inside. Because I can't read Chinese, and that's what all the markings are in, the only things I can read, I already know, 36 volt and 10.4 amp hours. That's the battery and the chargers also included with the bike. Easy to open and close, check. The usefulness as a folder, kind of a question mark. Because normal folding bikes have tall stems for a reason, so the handlebars can be folded down. Not so with this standard setup, so it's less compact up top. Though, unlike my fat tire folding e-bikes, it's considerably more compact below the bar, so it's something to consider if you have to put it folded somewhere. I've talked about everything so far but the bike's range, and Cyrusher claims 20 to 37 miles per charge. Here are my results after 10 charge cycles. Average throttle only, 13 miles. And this is over multiple charge cycles, but an average. Pedal assist, 5. I'm averaging 21 miles per charge. 
Mixed mode, meaning a combo of throttle, pedal assist modes 3 through 5, 31 miles. Now, I have no doubts that on flat ground and in pedal assist mode 1, I could hit or exceed the 37 mile claim. But pedal assist mode 1, that's no fun, and if I'm riding an e-bike, I'm using the power. All 36 volts and 400 watts of it. And there you go, my take on the Cyrusher XF700. I'll put a link down in the description if you want to check it out. Leave a comment below and let me know what you think about this e-bike. I'd be curious to hear, do you think the mag wheels and standard bars are appealing, or would you pass on it for something else in the same price range? Also, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you found it informative, and if you haven't already, you should consider hitting that subscribe button and the notification bell because Project Boundary is the next video and you're going to want to see it. Thanks so much for watching Kev Central, and have a great day.